Hey guys, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. My name is Muiwa. My name is Oluwani Femi. My name is Ogunyeru. My name is Emmanuel. And I'm Chingos. It's a full house today. It is. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So Netflix is considering ad supported model. Very interesting. Somebody is looking for money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, Netflix is um considering ad supported plans. So basically you pay less but you get ads. So now they have like the lowest plan is I think 1200 naira. The mobile only mobile plan. Mobile only plan. Mm. But with this you probably pay say 500, 600, 700. We don't know exactly the amount, but you pay that amount and you get ads. Mm. But you get to watch Netflix. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you miss <been> spoiled. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but Netflix Everybody with ads. YouTube nah. Ads now. I don't I use YouTube Premium. I don't I don't miss I don't watch ads. Nah. You, 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 I YouTube, don't want that. <laughs> you, YouTube YouTube with um with ads was a norm for me before I got introduced to YouTube Premium. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I mean you only just came to Nigeria uh, two years ago. Yes. Was it two years or 2019? Uh, yeah. Two years ago. Two years YouTube ago. YouTube Music. Yeah, yeah, that was 2020. 2020. No, it was 2019. Oh, 2019. So three yes. years ago. Yes. And I think most of Africa are around the same time. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes, we've lived with YouTube and the ads for a while. So I, I don't know if it will be very strange for people that want to pay less. I to think enjoy it's Netflix original, so originals. Let's not ju- let's just forget other mov- other shows, originals that make waves and get popular and trend. Mm, I think it depends on how the ads are. So, so are they pre-roll ads? Do they play just before you? Um. Well, Netflix doesn't know. Middle? Netflix doesn't know how they are going to implement it yet because apparently it's going to happen in say one or two years time. Oh, so they're just considering so it. So they're just considering But this is official it. from Netflix. Yes, like? this is official from them. They did their earnings call yesterday or so. So okay. Rick Hastings was saying this on the earnings call. Hmm. So I, I, I'm getting a feeling it's related to... Maybe it's just a coincidence. There's a news report that they lost three, 200,000 subscribers. Yep, 200,000 last subscribers quarter. last quarter. First time they're doing that in 10 years. So obviously they'll be looking for ways to prevent that from happening. I think they're actually expecting two million subscribers this quarter. Two more, mi- two to lose two million no, subscribers. No, to get two million subscribers. Oh, to get two million subscribers yes. this quarter. Yes. So it's not all bad news for them, then, is it? Um, oh, okay, it's just an expectation. It was an expectation. Yeah. I think because according to them as well, they said that they lost some subri- subscribers in Russia because of the Russia-Ukraine tensions and all of that. So mm. everything just basically added up to it. Then they also mentioned something really interesting. He said that. Covid, like Covid nineteen, helped boost up their plan. Mm. But Makes now sense. that Covid nineteen is basically leveling down and all of that, uh, the people are moving the on. <laughs> are settling, so obviously they are seeing mm. the real numbers. Yeah, maybe Squid Game too had a role to play in. Mm, Squid Game, Bridgerton, right. all of those originals that people were watching. So. Yeah, so either they need to just produce more originals, but I, but I guess the, I guess the idea is expanding to emerging markets. Like they, they are saturated in the US and those mm-hmm. emerging markets. They, they, they're just trying to find a yeah. way to get yeah. to break markets into, to yeah. which is why they even introduced the mobile only plan. But they don't know. It's not because we don't like them. The imagine that <laughs> market. Like, there's no money. I think they know. Yeah, that's why they're doing ad supported now. Right? <laughs> to make it cheaper and then push the push the rest of the cost to the advertisers. So we discover for the two hundred thousand that has been lost. Likely so. Maybe. <laughs> Likely Probably. so. Probably. I mean, two thousand two hundred thousand is global. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can do that with ad supported. There. Yeah. They can easily do that. And then they will make more money from ads too. Yes. You so make money from ads m- maybe. and you get more. My, my issue with the whole thing is the demography of people that watch stuff and don't mind ads. Are those people willing to even pay a dime? Because mm. they said I it's don't think going so. to be lower priced, not free. So, But I feel it should be free. And completely ad supported. Completely ad supported. Mm. So, but I mean, maybe there's some thinking, be- there's some business thinking behind that decision to make mm. it just lower priced. But uh, people that want to watch Netflix, 
and don't want to subscribe to the 1200 naira plan i like not going to even pay anything they want to watch it for free so anyway that's just my own thought about this my own concern is uh i mean the, the we're talking about growth here and the room for growth is future generations or people who are young right now mm-hmm. and those who are young the gen z's and even people that are millennials right they are so very very used to on demand so mm-hmm. even for things they get free right like like watching tiktok videos instagram and whatnot they are used to even if they get ads like on tiktok for example they In are the not they are not presented as ads mm. right right so they are, they are used to getting things that don't look like ads they are used to just getting their content no ads so i don't know if this will be appealing to them netflix and netflix is making this decision I, I, i don't know if there are other people that offer something like this streaming streaming services yeah yeah so in the us um hbo hulu and um i think espn plus already do ad supported plans disney plus plans to do that in this year late this year or mid year but um hbo what hbo does is that they promise you four ads in an hour mm. so basically you get in an hour of streaming you get only four ads <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> say only <laughs> four ads is a lot but the four ads could be 15 to 30 seconds Short that's one course. minute of ads one minute of ads yes So before I start I watch an ad in the middle I watch and just about just when the actor is about to, about to shoot the <laughs> boss, <laughs> the boss ad. like that would be so annoying. <laughs> it reminds me of ETV no. Africa there's this um there's this channel on DSTV yeah. ETV Africa South African yes um, mm. you be watching I'm trying to remember the beat do ads and I'm like in between the why <laughs> like what the hell now <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the age of the on demand TV now nah. <laughs> nah. it's not we for me we can't please. cope so quick question um did they like specify what part of the world these 200 million customers were lost no they didn't it's like just everybody because um like so subscription services in the US took a hit last year so about like it, the the number of people who have subs dropped mm. last year and uh, about 4.5 million consumers canceled subscriptions um in the third quarter of 2021 so mm. why are they canceling subscriptions this is not just netflix now it's across board so why are they canceling um their subscriptions and uh, i mean most of our discussion has been around emerging markets so could it also be that we it's are a kind of thing. yeah it's a global thing and it, it, the market is kind of getting saturated Mm. because uh for most of us I know the other the bully was thinking about switching from Netflix to um, I think it was Disney Plus or so so is it available in Nigeria I, I don't no, it's not. Disney VPN Plus it. Disney Plus is only available in South Africa for now okay so uh, but he was trying to like switch from Netflix to another provider so mm. if he switches that's one sub, that, that's one um, customer lost for so it could be similar to what um banks and fintechs in Nigeria are doing mm-hmm. you know I lose customer you gain Or one churches. when you fuck up <laughs> <laughs> so I, I that could be one of the reasons why they are losing customers um, unfortunately we don't yet have data for other streaming platforms mm. so we cannot say if they also lost customers um, because now if if Netflix is losing someone has to be gaining mm-hmm. so we yeah. need to like to get the balanced picture who is losing but, and who is gaining these customers but we're all also not sure if people are actually like leaving one streaming platform and going to another maybe people are just leaving streaming platforms permanently and saying well i'm tired of um watching stuff on my phone i need to go out mm. because that's one thing they mentioned in the reports that is the netflix shareholder letter they sent they said that people are going out more now people are tired of staying at home and watching tv and watching stuff on their phones not interacting with people mm. so they lost customers because of that too so like the after effect of the pandemic people like ah, it's time to reconnect with people mm. i don't need netflix subscription anymore so what does that say for people who are developing solutions in the metaverse mm. the metaverse thing eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a story for another day yeah, i think it's a fad but <laughs> anyway okay um would like to hear what you think would you use an ad supported netflix would you use netflix with ads or any subscription service i wouldn't but i'd like to hear what you think <laughs> still on big tech and uh, 
um, yeah, how they affect Africa. Google, there's some big news with yeah. Google. Yeah, they in just, Africa. They, they just launched uh, their first product development center in Nairobi, Kenya. So Not Lagos. Uh, so, <laughs> and that's keeping of Nigeria. Oh yeah, yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry. Let, let me interrupt you this moment. Okay. Incidentally, right, I saw a court article from 2014 that said Nigeria, not Kenya, is about to be the, it's about to become Africa's next big tech hub. The story is changing. Ghana. What year was that? That was 2014. Make of that whatever you will. <laughs> <laughs> But now it seems it, it, the thing, everything is shifting away from Nigeria. So Imane, please go on. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so before I, I'll come out to address those comments, but the news is they've launched the center They want to develop products that are targeted at Africans, specifically targeted for Africans. And built from the look of Africans. things, it's going to be built by Africans. They mm. are hiring across different produ- positions, product managers, UI, UX, researchers and designers, software engineers, and every other kind of tech-related role you can think of, or most tech-related roles you can think of. Yeah, they're hiring for that. So, yeah, that's... Well, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. Nairobi Kenya, right? Nairobi It Kenya. was in 2019 they launched their AI research in, in Accra, Ghana. Ghana. Yeah. So Then Twitter launched their office in Ghana. Ghana, yes. Everybody's yeah. keeping Nigeria. At least Microsoft has its uh, ADC. Yeah, Microsoft ADC is in Nigeria and Kenya, Lagos and Nairobi. So Microsoft is like the only one. I mean, yeah, okay, Google, when Google has been in Lagos, but most of the roles were like marketing, marketing sales. Roles. They've not had actual tech roles. So Microsoft is like the first to actual have actual tech. We have the likes of um, Adora, Adora will be that you interviewed yes. for Microsoft. Mm-hmm. We'll link to our inspiring story. But then I have a question, right? I mean, there are many angles to this. But so now Google has launched its product development center in Nairobi, Kenya, right? Yeah. But then, at least based on when Twitter moved to Ghana and launched in Ghana, the rules they were hiring for seem to be targeted at Nigerians. Mm -hmm. I think, arguably, the talent is in Nigeria. Yeah. Right? The talent is in Nigeria. So these guys are probably going to be having to hire Nigerian talent. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, I understand why they are not in Lagos, Nigeria. But they still need Nigerian talent. And then there's the whole conversation around how traveling within Africa is very difficult, mm. especially for Nigerians. Yeah. So how do they then attract this talent that they need mm. outside Nigeria to these hopes they are, they are building in mm. Ghana and Kenya and South Africa? Because okay. Amazon too also has like... Yeah, they plan to launch uh, AWS cloud infrastructure yeah. in Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. They already, they already have in South Africa. Yes. Yeah. So, so if they are trying to lo- hire African talent, but most of the talent seems to be in Nigeria, but it's difficult for Nigerians to travel across Africa. Mm-hmm. How does it work for the big tech companies? So, yeah, the, the easiest way out could be remote jobs. Like uh, COVID has made it easy for people to work remotely. So that mm-hmm. is one. But two, uh, based on my own personal experience, I wouldn't say I have sufficient, sufficient data to back it, right? But trips to Ghana in 2019 and the trip to uh, Kenya earlier in the year in February. I think there are a lot of things you can, there are several sides to the story, right? When one bad thing happens to one Nigerian, uh, two or three Nigerians on different, different countries, that news comes to social media. But the reality is there are people from Nigeria that have actually settled in those countries. Uh, I, in 2019, I met someone who basically grew up in Ghana and a Nigerian person mm. and was recommending places for me to eat Nigerian food and stuff like that. So, mm. and he basically speaks the language. He has gelled with the community and all of it's that. He's one of them. Yeah, you, you could argue that he's one of them. Yeah, so, but the, the so like, experience I had in Kenya, we came, down, came down at the airport and the police officers, I'm sure they noticed that we're Nigerians based on our accent. And... They started interrogating us, not interrogating, but the line of questioning, if you are not someone who is level-headed, you probably get pissed and lose your cool, right? So, um, which is probably what happens most of the time. And I don't actually blame these African countries for being wary of Nigerians. Mm. It's a sad situation, but most people are, they've heard terrible stories about Nigerians. So their defenses are up. 
Yeah, so their defense also you you are it's a case of being guilty until you are proven otherwise <laughs> innocent. <laughs> so they will treat you with suspicion until they can prove that you are someone that they can trust and you're not the Nigerian uh, the typical Nigerian they hear in the news. Yeah, so that's uh that's one thing, right? Uh, there are several Nigerians working in some of these countries people are relocating people are going from places to places of course you can see that most people will typically likely go and uh, settle down in places like UK or Canada but for yeah, a place like Kenya that's the preferred destination spot for Nigerians <laughs> first choice <laughs> so for places like Kenya and South Africa of course they are terrible news but i feel it's a it's on individual uh, case by case basis right you are going to meet a, you are in Nigerian. You are going to meet a Nigerian who doesn't like foreigners, and you are going to go into Kenya, and you are going to meet Kenyans who don't like foreigners. Mm-hmm. But you actually meet Kenyans who like foreigners, mm-hmm. who like Nigerians. So you can't just generalize and say, "Oh, uh, African yeah. countries don't." It's what we see in the media. Yeah, mm-hmm. what we see in the media. Of and um, the cases of uh, attacks on Nigerians in the recent I case in South that. Africa. Yeah, when, when those bad stuff happen, yeah. we bring it to social media. But like I. We like I talked. I mentioned earlier. We talked to police people. We laughed and joked about getting a wife in Kenya and all of that. Mm. And I didn't post it online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's because Fa- the good around. the good things are supposed to be like normal. No, exactly. So the bad things when they happen to you, they're like okay, strange. Yeah, we need to share this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I guess so. I guess so. So th- there's there's still the other um, aspect which local founders I saw I saw it yesterday and um, the person was like um, Google, Visa, Microsoft, all of them in Nairobi, Kenya. So investors are scared, um, founders are scared. So there's a we already know that we don't have enough talent in Africa, mm-hmm. but there's also the case of you having to compete with them on home turf. So it's mm. it's one thing when they're hiring from abroad. But now they are with you. They can. They don't need to slide into DMs again. They can just take it through to your office. To your next stop. And then ask you, ask your best engineer for his release clause. And then the next oh day, my, oh my, oh my, that's scary. Next thing you see, he's uh, he's leaving. So assuming you even have a release clause. Exactly. So it, it's crazy. So last year, um, there were a few startups, like top. Kenya startups and they lost their best engineers to mm. micro, uh, to the likes of Microsoft. So it's, it's, it's worrying for a local founder. I don't have the money to pay these guys. I know they are good. Like, they are good. But I don't have the money to pay them at the same level that the foreign big tech, tech guys are, can, willing are, are willing to pay. Like, it's nothing to them. Yeah. So what do you do in that case? So I think it still comes back to the whole conversation around ensuring that there's a steady um, stream of talent that is moving from junior roles to senior, to senior roles. roles. But mm. even at that, it's still not a very, very easy thing. Okay, you take five years to get someone to senior engineer. And, and within that period... Come, come and reap the reward of your labor. <laughs> exactly. So. And then you have to train again. Yeah. So essentially, like becoming like in football analogy, the PSV, mm. Ajax... West terms of the, of the footballing world, <laughs> Kenyan <laughs> startups, African so, startups in general will be like that. I have a startup idea that I'm going to throw out there. Mm, you heard this year first. <laughs> <laughs> junior level talent, build them or train junior level talent and then send them, not just to startups, send them to any business at all. They could just be building websites, mobile apps for local businesses, mm-hmm. whether in Nigeria, sorry, whether in Africa or outside Africa. Mm-hmm. And whenever they like, they can become senior engineers. It's not a business, but your focus is to just make sure there's a steady stream of junior engineers. Might not be a very profitable idea, mm-hmm. but if I, you, I, I'm if aware you, of an NGO that is doing something similar. So uh, it's a new. The spelling is E N Y E. The NGO that does something similar. Mm-hmm. They take junior engineers mm-hmm. and pair them with um, head of product teams in different startups. Pair them with founders who are building stuff. Mm-hmm. So, they are building startups from scratch with these guys. So they look for co-founders yeah. that don't have the probably don't have the resources mm-hmm. yet to hire an engineer. They build the product together, and sometimes these guys, if they are able to successfully build the product, they become 
probably the CTO of the company or one of their top uh, engineers in the company. So, but the main goal is to actually build to upskill these engineers from that junior, junior level role. to mm. at least, least mid level and a mid level role. The way you can say, okay, they've built products, you've worked on different different things and you've gained you know a certain level of experience yeah. so it's not just being able to code uh, remember it's being able to work with teams being able to lead mm. and being able to solve problems that uh in a way that the new newbie will not be able to think of so yeah mm. so many many things i think we have an, a built in africa episode yeah in the, yeah We'll link to that so you listen to how how they work out but i'm not sure that solves the the um co- closes the gap of senior talent that these big tech companies will will create yeah uh, so like someone startups. said um the junior engineers of today are the senior engineers of tomorrow mm-hmm. so uh, you yeah. need to start with those junior engineers nobody becomes um a senior engineer magically so it takes approximately five years for you to become a senior engineer so they have to be doing something within that period so the only issue is um within that five years not so many people are keen on hiring them so that i, I think that's why what the enya is doing is kind of impressive you can have them working on maybe just low level stuff without uh, maybe serious pressure but they build they build that skill and then later on they could always become like senior engineers yeah, yeah but I, i was speaking to your point of how the big tech companies will come and be poaching senior talents from okay. local startups and then they can't compete because they have needs they've been doing it they have needs for senior talents uh, yeah i'm trying to remember who, who published your report recently i think it's google right about um, uh, I have seen. Yeah. yeah it's about the number of developers in africa yeah, yeah. And most of them have either have um are working for international companies on this side percent of them on the side or fully and they are working remotely so is 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 a long standing problem mm. is a challenge um african has the talent but international companies are dragging it with local companies yeah. mm. and there's nothing they can do about it i don't know yeah overall i think they are positive oh, okay you want to say yeah, something guys is willing to make enough money to be able to challenge those guys yeah so, <laughs> so even if you are making enough money you want to be dragging developer with big tech Yeah, is so that what you use your money big, for? Big tech was once a startup, you know. In the long run, no, it doesn't concern the senior developer. Yeah, in the long run, he's thinking about his resume. Exactly. It's good for the the talent, but for the startups, I think what he's going to do is, you might see a situation, and some people are already doing it. They are now moving to um, Eastern Europe to hire talent from Eastern Europe, and from what I've read, um, Eastern European talents are almost at the same. Um, like pay grade as Nigerian talents. Some of them are even having to move to um, Latin American talents in order for them to fill that gap. So it's the whole globalization of talent is actually happening right before our eyes. Mm. Well, anyway, in, in, in the long run, I think there's some positives. I mean, big tech having actual tech presence, not marketing or sales yeah. in these places. So there will be capacity building yeah. some of this talent they train will decide to stay in africa or they're they in africa already anyway right mm-hmm. so yeah it's just i think regulation is one thing that will be very important a serious government to think about how to i think uh, there's one that this. was they planned on like creating curriculum so the government they create a curriculum and then they work with the government so they train a lot more people instead like they basically train guys mm. and then with the government so it, it could work out well if a very good government has like a plan for it mm. yeah cool so let's come back to nigeria now we've we've gone global we went to nairobi kenya now let's come to lagos uh, one of the digital banks kuda bank was under fire on twitter today yes um that was um on wednesday Mm. Yes. Um Kuda Bank Bank of the Free um uh, was in the news again. <laughs> <laughs> Please now let me add their motto. <laughs> <laughs> It was in the news but not for the best things and uh, there was a video that was circulated on Twitter or on social media of um a customer that was maltreated on their premises by um an officer by officers of the Nigerian police force and what was going around was that the customer's account was frozen 
and he came to the bank to complain and the bank allegedly called Nigerian police to come and arrest him or that they, maybe there was a fraud case attached to the customer's account and they froze it for that reason and when he came to complain they invited the Nigerian police I don't know how true that is but that is what is going around online and, and that's why they man- manhandled him yes and it, it just brings to mind one one thing that it brought to mind was the recent fine that Nigerian banks got from um, CBN. I think there was one 800 million naira, and there's another 400 million naira that w- that was fined. That bank Nigerian banks were fined for allowing cryptocurrency try cryptocurrency transactions on their ba- in their bank. Maybe I'm th- I was we thinking. We don't know for a fact that it was a Yes. Then um, Kuda Bank released a statement because of what was going on people were calling for the for boycotting kuda bank app and people have been going to drop reviews we've been seeing video of people removing their money from kuda bank and deleting the app and closing the app and everything it's not looking good for kuda bank right it's (laughs) not looking good for kuda bank right now but um kuda bank released a, a response to or the sorry, I have to use this for the robo <laughs> <laughs> that is going on around their name, and I really can't make a lot of sense from the reports. They are admitting, I don't know, they are admitting that well, in in places where it is it is um, required, they cooperate with enforcement agencies with law enforcement agencies they are not admitting to anything they are not refuting anything they just that is the part that can make sense so of. are they essentially condoling the way it was manhandled or, I they, don't are, know. or they condemned it they, they, they are not saying they're not condemning anything they just said they they are they they are against okay they said they did not support violence they don't support violence. Yes, they but don't support was, but violence. But they, do, they don't deny. They didn't deny there was violence. Yes, there was. It was clear from the video, from the video show that was taken, that there was violence, and a, a customer was malandrued, and the customer said he had 1.2 million in his Kuda bank account, with a screenshot I found on, on Twitter, and oh, I, I, I think Kuda bank need to release another statement to clear this because a lot, a lot of people are saying. New banks promise the promise that new banks are giving so to that, that's my Nigeria, question, right? So, it's it, this is a question that I even want to like. Let's even um, it's really confusing me. So, Kuda Bank is a digital bank, yes, right? So, why is why is there a case of someone going to their office? I thought they're not supposed to, they're supposed to handle everything digitally, okay? Sometimes last year, which was which, which looked like a welcome idea, Kuda Bank, Kuda bank opened. Um, a customer service office in Yaba. Why? So that it's a digital bank to give to give people to give Nigerians a few, because you know I've, I've spoke to people about opening a Kuda bank account before, right? And they're like, ah, I can't do that though. If I want to change it for them in quotes, where will I go to? <laughs> so they needed to give customers the idea that. But well, isn't there a value proposition that you don't need to change it for them? Because they're digital and everything will be resolved. A wash. Well, <laughs> well that, that is what the promise was, which was what I was going to. Like, the promise that New Bank came with was like, all the problems you are facing with your traditional banks, you it's are over. not going to face it again. Whether you have to call them or you have to go to them to collect your card, I don't know. I've, I've, I've tried not to request for Kuda Bank card. I don't know the experience when you request for it. Maybe you get it quickly, but they just made it look like anything you want to do, you can do it virtually and you will get it done. Where it is not looking as, uh, like it, a person's bank was account was frozen and he had to go to their customer service um, office and he was treated this way. I don't know. I remember last year we um, I, I I wrote an article which, which didn't get publi- uh, published about comparing traditional banks and neo banks, right? We after the article we, we we did a video to to capture us calling 
different like eight banks four new banks and four traditional banks like biggest com- commercial banks in nigeria gtb zenith bank first bank and assets bank then we called a lot we called um kuda bank we called v for vfd as of that time spaku Spaku Bank doesn't have a customer care number, but you can reach them via email. So we just did a little experiment on how quick they respond to to um, complaints. Complaint. And it's, what is the adjective I will use here now? It's 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 very is is ironic that is the commercial banks, the traditional banks that actually had better scores than hmm. the new banks. It was just ironic because but i mean the point of the new banks is you don't have to call them anyway yeah you might no 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 there's no how you are dealing with customers and they will not have problem they They might be downtime that is beyond your control right Mm. there might be because you are hosting on a another platform that might have network issue Mm, but here's the thing here's the thing a paypal a google uh, like, you can't call their phone there's no phone to call mm. they yeah they, okay. you can email them even, and it's sometimes for some of them it's even very difficult to fig- figure out how to email their I've customer called but you've called paper yes and i've actually argued with them about their you spoke with someone at yes, the cost, uh, customer customer care. service yes. where did you find the number i just i don't remember but i know i just scoured the internet and i found the number and i asked them if paypal is available so if i can receive money in nigeria for paypal and he said no oh yeah i've actually called paypal before and mm. it's it was it, i stand corrected then it was a tedious mm-hmm. process yeah before you find that number i'm sure i, I don't even remember how i found it <laughs> but, but the question them. is do they have similar services i don't know <laughs> i right. mean you should, you should be able to resolve issues via their app if yes. you can't then what's the point of the digital bank what then is the point? But they, 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 maybe they just decided to have a, lot, a number of channels to reach them. You can reach them via their apps, email. You can go to their physical office, which was nice at first. Yeah, but was now it's not points? looking nice again. But the thing is, <laughs> I don't know the, the Nigerian banking problem. I don't know if new banks are capable of solving it. That is just the way it's looking at. What's the banking problem exactly and why can't they solve it? get having issue and getting your problem resolved easily mm. that is the, that's like the major problem with nigerian banks but there are banks now, i don't want to mention because we, we mentioned kuda because they are the subject of this I, I don't want to mention other banks so it's not like we're promoting them but there are banks that resolve issues yeah. uh, my bank i just sent an email issue resolved like i've been using them for 12 years same same thing here. I hardly have to go to the bank, except yeah. for things that maybe require your uh, v- visual ID. Like you need, to, I hardly have to go to the bank. And even when I go, I don't ever have to queue so for long. That, that that's cool. I I think I, <laughs> you I can't have to relate. Come to your bank. Yeah, I, I can't the, relate. I can't relate. <laughs> even when I was in the UK, I would send emails to resolve issues, and they will be resolved. Yeah. They'll send me a form to fill. I scan, I send it back. Issue resolved. But but then we cannot shy away from the fact that we have issue with queuing in banks for people to come and complain. It's issues that can be resolved. I don't know, maybe people don't call or there's use other channels. There's a specific bank that has that issue. You know the bank. They have too, <laughs> many, they have too many customers. <laughs> mm-hmm. And their color is... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so for 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 these banks okay so my first experience with the nigerian organization was with the bank and i remember being so disappointed with the customer service i was probably about four or five that i was like if i ever get to build a business in my life mm-hmm. customer service is going to be the core of that business which is supposed to be yes like it's so, just like it's after thoughts for companies these days so I this this was like how many years ago, almost twenty years ago, but some when I had the idea, I, by the time I grew up, I was like, okay, maybe someone will get to do stuff better. But twenty years later, and people are the still doing story. the same thing. So I'm trying to probably give them a way out now. So when you grow from zero to one point two million in less than four years, it's a lot of growth. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, very few people. Our the banks we are they are competing against the traditional banks. They didn't have the leverage of having such big scaling growth. Mm-hmm. They didn't they didn't have that. So, um not everybody is going to be equipped to build structures mm-hmm. that ensure that you handle such growth. So, I think that's a problem. Um these guys have never had experience growing businesses at this scale and now they're basically figuring things out as they go. Very and true. That's probably why they are having customer service is always going to be the the person that suffers. So we keep on giving the um, the example of Paystack. Paystack has grown very very slowly compared to competitors, and we can see that customer care is a lot better than what we can see with other people. So probably that focus on Silicon Valley grow at all expense is a problem here. Mm-hmm. If you can grow gradually. Mm-hmm. And grow it's, with the size you can control at because, every. Because point. how do you go from handling only ten people, and then four months later you're handling two hundred people? Yeah. Uh, but uh, Amazon had that uh, focus on growing massively, and mm. their core focus was also customer customer service. service. But, like, but, but, but you know, it's it's kind of they were so obsessed with customer that it's it was really. It created very horrible working conditions. Oh, but they, yeah. they, they loved what they were doing, though. Yeah, but they were not sleeping. They were not. Okay. So, so be, is the customer here? Say, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying they should have. They shouldn't have had a had a good work culture while they were doing that. But is the customer you are serving? If you can't solve their problem without disturbing their lives, then what are you doing? I can't like. The, the worst thing I hate to hear, the, what I hate to hear the most when I call to complain is... Yeah, sorry for the, inter- for the no. inconvenience. For those scripted responses. No. Like, you are, you're not sorry, sorry, first of all. And I'm I don't care about you scream. being sorry. Yeah, yeah. I remember my mother's article. Don't tell me you are sorry. <laughs> don't tell me you're sorry. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> and keep on, like I spoke with the customer care agent and at every single you know how you send hello hi uh-huh. when I send hello we are sorry for, for the inconvenience hello <laughs> I'm sorry for the it was so frustrating like unfortunately she was not there in person and even though even if she was there in person I know that I can't exactly take out my frustration on her so I was frustrated why are you telling me you're sorry at every chance you get? Like, what I, is supposed I, I, to I think good customer care costs a lot of money. You have to have yeah. people on shifts, mm-hmm. right? And well trained. Well trained. You have to train them. So too. most of these people, they, they, they are not well trained. So maybe in the case of these digital banks, the issue is because their premise is already to be digital and not having to do anything, they don't invest so much in that uh, customer yeah. care. And all, and then of course they have to consider cost and all of that. So maybe for them that's not like a priority. But maybe now, I think you should. I like yes, to see yes. how many customer service guys they have. I it's think it's yes, also the cultural aspect of it. We as Africans, we really take customer care as important. Is an is an mm-hmm. irony because you are serving the customer and you are just if when you go to your not, your local store and you want to get something. Just be like you came there. <laughs> they do, they, they do you a favor. Like, <laughs> so Nigerians, well, Africans in general are not used to like actually treating the customer well. Mm, uh, yeah, like kind of have different experiences. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's a gen- maybe it's an unfair generalization. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Right. maybe it is because yeah, maybe it is. But I, I wish I hope the digital banks figure it out. Um, because when you go on Twitter or and search a lot of this digital bank. Um, their names, they always complaints yeah. and whatnot. So I, I hope Which they figure it out. Green pins, I guess. Function. Yeah, what is it? It's not different for the for traditional banks as well. So. Yeah, but oh, some are being well. My issue is this. My issue is this. When you drag the traditional bank, at least they answer you. Mm-hmm. Or some of these digital banks, they, they don't answer. We we'll send them emails and they completely air you. What, what, why? Why? <laughs> at least, at least have the gods talk to me. If my bank airs me, I can actually pick up my bags and go to the nearest branch but nationwide. Branch. But these guys usually they don't only have one branch. If they have an office at all, it's going to be here in Lagos. What about people using it in Meduguri? What about people using it in Jos, Abuja, Port Harcourt? What mm. happens to them? So mm. uh, I think there's a higher standard to be expected for from neo banks digital banks compared to traditional banks mm-hmm. considering that it's money it's people's money you're talking about yeah. <laughs> and they yeah. don't even know where you are 
And it's probably in their favor that they're digital. So you want to invest in customer care. You don't have to build infrastructure. <laughs> Just remote work. Remote right. work, right? Um, get people all over the nation. I'm all just wondering how that works. You don't. Have, we have power issues in Nigeria. <laughs> you figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> you have internet connection. <laughs> so, so you still don't spend the money, out. right? Yeah. No, but it's calls now. And they don't have the kind of. Yeah. They, they don't have the kind of funding. Yeah. Calls. Yeah, What's it's calls. Mm, yeah. Do you need much internet and power for that? Yeah, you charge your phone. You charge go phone. all day. Okay. okay. Ah. And of course, if you talk about cost, I mean, <laughs> uh, before. Uh, I think we have a discussion uh, just before we started the podcast about the cost, uh, what it costs to actually set up a digital bank yeah, in Nigeria, yeah, right? Uh, most of them use an MFB license, and mm-hmm. the license I just found out that this nationwide license actually costs it costs a whopping five billion naira. Wow, five yeah. billion naira. Yeah, that's how much is that in dollars? That's roughly ten million dollars. Uh, how much the Kuda raise in their last round? 55 million. Just take a little from there and buy APCs. <laughs> okay, no, but that's just a one-time fee. Then, then there's like a it's comment. It's not really a fee per se. It's just a paid-up capital to be put in an account. Oh, okay. So the fee is at, it's not even up to a million. The, the license, license annual license or yes, monthly? It's, it's, uh, I don't know if it's annual, but from uh, what CBN put on their exposure drafts, it doesn't look like it's not going to be that much, even if it's a monthly fee, about two hundred and fifty thousand naira monthly. I don't think that's too much for. Yeah, that's not their major cost. Mm. Yeah, that's. Is yeah. that, I, I wonder what their major cost is because no infrastructure. Talent uh, has to be one of the. Talent has costs. to be the major cost. Uh, uh, customer care needs to be the next one. They need to consider yeah. that. Marketing. Mm. Marketing. Free yeah. everywhere with billboards. They, they do a lot of marketing. We see their billboards everywhere. Purple. And they do a lot of place. endorsement deals. <laughs> yes. 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 That cost a lot of money. You need to have a conversation about the ROI on those um, endorsement yeah, deals. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they come No, but well, you have to be careful. So that <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a, a healthy deal. conversation for the ecosystem. Really? <laughs> but then, I think this is a good time to remind other banks or businesses, your customers are your priorities. In case you forgot. Yes, we just have to remind people. Yeah. Customer is a priority. Tweet that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'd we'll like to hear your thoughts. Our time is already fast spent. Uh, I guess because it was a full house today, so we spent more time. We promised you we'll be doing 35-minute podcast, but then here we are doing <laughs> 42 minutes and seconds and counting. Anyway, so we'll just wrap this up immediately. Thank you for listening and staying this long with us. If you are listening for the first time, this is the Tech Point Africa podcast, and you can get it where? Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, I Heart Radio. Basically, anywhere else you bo- get your podcast. Anyway, yeah, you I didn't podcast. forget podcast addicts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Anyway, you get podcast. So thank Everybody. you for staying with us. And then we'll catch you next week. Have a good day. Don't Bye. forget, we'd like to hear from you. You can email us podcasts at techpoint.africa. You can tweet your thoughts using the hashtag techpointafricapodcast. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.